Welcome to Tamara Talks with me, Tamara Thielander. Today I'm here at the Soho International Film Festival for the New York City premiere of West End. Let's go talk to some of the cast members. Uh, the movie is Hamlet on the Jersey Shore, uh, about a kid that runs away from his mafia family. He's disgraced by his father going to jail. And he comes home 10 years later after his father's been murdered. And as he delves back into his family, we find out that he's an FBI agent undercover in his family to find out who killed his father. And I know you grew up in New Jersey and then you currently live in Los Angeles now. So why did you decide to come back to make the movie in New Jersey? Um, uh, you know, uh, West End is my homage to the Jersey Shore. It's my homage to New Jersey. Like, all, like Bruce Springsteen did, like Bon Jovi has. We all have a, a, a deep connection to the motherland. So, I, you know, and tomorrow I was privileged enough to shoot before Sandy. So, as I, 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 it's good and bad. I have the last movie shot in Seaside Heights. So tonight, you'll be seeing like big iconic pictures of the Jersey Shore that are no longer there. And I feel very lucky to have done that. No, that's definitely great. And um, can you tell me, like, in the movie, you, you, well, first of all, you're basically director, producer, writer, and you play Father Mike. I am like, Father Mike. what, like, <laughs> that just makes me dizzy just thinking about it. What was the biggest challenge for you to be wearing all these different hats in one production? Um, the, the buck stopped with me. So I was responsible for everything that had to happen. So, you know, I would wake up at nights and like, it never failed. At 1.30 I'd be like this, oh, 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 oh. and I had to figure out like, it was, there was so much on my plate that it was just constant problem solving. And hopefully you'll see it tonight and I did a good job. Hopefully you'll go, oh, that was very good, thank you. And I'll go, thank you. Did you find difficult being behind the camera and then kind of jumping in front, or did that feel very natural to you? Um, Father Mike is a crucial part of the, the movie. He's not, he's not in every scene. He's a great supporting character, and it was just enough. It was just enough to be able to do my best on screen and keep the continuity behind the camera. So... If I answer, I feel like I'm going off track, and that's and that's the answer to my question. I'm going to end there. <laughs> so this was your first feature as a director, and did you feel intimidated at all by the star power that was in it? That this is your first project? Not at all. Um, I was lucky enough to have brought in. I know I brought in 14 people that I knew in my journey in Hollywood. Like I don't know if you talked to Anthony. But I did a movie with Anthony. Lou helped me out. I did a television show with Peter Onorati. Wayne Duvall has been a friend of mine. I did a cheapy movie with him years ago. So I, I felt it felt great to be able to pick up the phone and go, yo, I'm doing it in New Jersey. Uh, it's me. Can you come? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. So it's nice because it's basically working with friends. Absolutely. And it's, and it's the greatest. It's great to be creating with the people that you love, as, cor as corny as that might sound. Well, we've been sort of uh, making analogies that this is Hamlet at the Jersey Shore. If it is, I'm Claudius. I'm the antagonist, the bad uncle, uh, who um, pretty much takes over everything. And But you don't find out till the end, so I hope I'm not spoiling anything. <laughs> Uh, and is responsible for all the bad stuff. Oh, wow. So you play a very controversial character. So what would you say as an actor did you like and dislike about the character? The thing I liked about it was New Jersey is my home state. Um, this character is a compilation of my uncle who was the chief of police, another uncle who was in a mob, another uncle who wasn't in a mob but wanted to be. You know, so it was, it was easy for me to draw upon you know my past for this and uh, and and that was that was the pleasure when I mean when I first saw the script I went this is something that I could do in my sleep there are other things that are stretched for me but not this so why would you say are independent films so important for the film industry I, I honestly as an actor I, I want to say it gives people like me who 
or on a lower tier a chance. But really, what's more important than that is that good scripts like this get seen. Independent films, basically to me, the benefit of them are that scripts like this that would never get to a studio get out there and get done. And, you know, and there's always the, you know, the, the dance around who, who's going to do it so we can get distribution money and all that stuff. But, but the fact of the matter is, I think the greatest value is that this great creativity gets out there. And aside from the fact that we actors like to do these kind of roles and don't often get a chance to do them in big studio films. So, Melissa, tell us a little bit about the character that you play in the movie. Um, I play Lauren Bucciolata, which is Vic Trevi's, uh, Vic Trevi Jr.'s ex-girlfriend from high school. And after he left town, she ended up marrying his best friend. So he comes back into town. Things get a little crazy. <laughs> So you, more than one reason. So you are mainly a TV girl. What made you take this leap into films? Um, I, I actually did my first film uh, two years ago, and I love it. So um, you know, when this opportunity came, I wanted to do it. I like the script, and it's fun. I enjoy it. And in the movie, you get to kiss both Neil and Joe. Is that right? <laughs> yes, that's true. So who would you say is the better kisser? Oh, girl never tells. <laughs> So would you be focusing more on movies right now or you want to go back to TV? I'm actually currently uh, back on TV, well sort of TV, I'm on <laughs> online on Hulu and iTunes. We start um, April 29th we launch for One Life to Live Again. What character do you play in this movie? Uh, let's see if, if I can remember the guy's name. Uh, uh, Jimmy Vitrone is the guy's name, yeah. One of those guys that uh, either you love him or you hate him, there's no in between with my character. And in your career you've played a lot of good people, bad people, cops, mobsters. Which one do you prefer playing? Well, you know what? It's always, uh, I think, more interesting to play the darker type characters. I mean, I just did a movie in Pittsburgh called uh, Under the Rainbow where I played a serial killer. And that's about as dark as you can get. So usually the darker guys are, are a lot more fun than the, uh, you know, the vanilla uh, cookie cutter guys. But hey, as long as you're working, that's what's fun. <laughs> so how do you channel your dark side? Believe me, it's there. Believe me, it's there. You just have to go way back here. And find it. You find well. That's one of the things you do as an actor. I mean, I played a schizophrenic one time, and I was when I got hired. I mean, I cried for a week, thinking like, how am I going to pull this off? You know. But you do your research, and you do your work as an actor, and you do your preparation, and you find where you need to go. So, what is your ultimate good guy role that you would want to play? Your dream role? Oh, geez, my dream role. Well, you know, I think as an actor, your dream role is just to be working steady. So I wouldn't mind having my own sitcom, having a nice house in the hills, and or in Malibu even, you know, and get a nice 10 or 11 year run like the Seinfeld kind of thing, and, and no worries, and they just keep on acting. You know? Or your own little talk show where you get to interview people on the red carpet. Yeah, that would be fun too. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me what character do you play in this movie? I play Fat Patty O'Hara, who is an Irish gangster who gets in, not bed literally, but he, he works with um, Peter Onorati's character. and. I'm kind of like a, a low-level thug. Does it bother you that the character is called Fat Patty? I figured they went the opposite way, and because I'm svelte, that's why they call me that. No, no, I don't care. I, you know. No, I just I made a good living paying the portly actor. <laughs> so you've been in the industry for a while. I do have. you do you still get excited about red carpets? They're fun. Yeah, it's it is. They're fun. I mean, sometimes you go, what what's going on? I don't know what this is about, but it, it's fun. You know, it's like you dress up. It's Halloween. It's great. You know. And of all the directors and actors that you've worked with, was there anyone that you've been super star starstruck with? I just finished working with Steven Spielberg. I was in Lincoln, and. Um, yeah, that was pretty amazing. He was a master. He, he, he treated everyone like gold, you know, but it was just you looking at Steven Spielberg, you know, and he's talking to you and he's giving you direction. So it was wonderful. That was fabulous. I play uh, Luke Priscotti. Uh, I'm Pina Honorati's right-hand man. I'm a really bad guy in a movie. I, I, I'm the man in black and a very, very bad boy. Uh, so much so that you... I, You'll see. I don't want to tip it away, but I'm a really bad, bad guy. Now, my daughter's playing the hostess, so she's the good part. What did you find most challenging about your character? Because sometimes with those, within those kind of roles, it's difficult finding the spark. How did you go about that? Well, I actually was a hostess <laughs> as a job, so I didn't find it too challenging to work it into that role. That's nice, because you kind of just, you're just being yourself. Yeah, it was basically just being myself, getting... And the great thing about it is, is the first time we were on film together. 
father and daughter, you know. So our last it's Anthony Mangano and Nicole Mangano. I just figured I'd throw it in there, but you'll, you know, it's uh, and the irony is Joe, the director, and I we met. Oh my God! Uh, I think it's 15, 16 years ago. We did Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag, and we were the, we were the co-stars of the movie. So we were the guys trying to kill Pesci throughout the whole movie. It's a comedy. And now, you know, Joe and I kept friends, and when he asked me to do this, it was great. So it's a. I, I can't give too much away until you see the movie, because then when in the end, you'll see. But I'm a really good guy in real life. I'm not the bad guy. And you seem like a really nice guy. I just quickly want to touch on something totally a little bit different. It's nice that you have family together in the film, but you also have your short film, Heart and, Heart and Soul. Yes. And it, just tell us a little bit about that, and if it was difficult playing your dad as the character. Yeah, it was. It was because it's too much to heart because my mom, it, it got a little, it can mess your mind up because I had the actress playing my mother and I'm playing my father and I have to be romantic and it, 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 it messed me up for a little bit for a while, but it was a tribute to them, especially to my mom who passed away and my dad who suffers from multiple sclerosis and he's going to be 84 years old. And I just wanted to do something. We're trying to turn it into a feature. We're, we're getting close. But uh, I'll probably get bumped for Johnny Depp. And I'll have to play one of the secondary roles. But at least the short got a lot of, it got a lot of press. I mean, all the media picked it up because it was a father-son thing and, and the fact that he has MS. So it was really nice. I think you're so much better looking than Johnny Depp. So you should definitely get the role. I, I, so I appreciate that. But you know, I, I, you know, God bless him. He's a star. He's got a lot of clout, so I'm just making a reference, but you never know. Just a quick thing for the people who don't know what Heart and Soul is about, just give them a brief synopsis. Uh, Heart and Soul is a, a short film about my dad, singer Tony Mann, who he raised three children with my mom, Anna, and he was torn between being a family man and being a nightclub singer and the mob getting involved trying to run his career and things didn't quite turn out right. He had very close shots. I mean, he, he was on the verge of becoming a superstar and this things kind of just fell out from under him. But he raised us and, you know, provided for us and it, it just shows the, the life of him. Of, of, it's supposed to be a story about a man who comes full circle at the end of his life or close to his end. But it, he wasn't a failure because he didn't become a superstar. He, was a, he became a success because he has a legacy of children to live on. That's true success. He has a granddaughter, he has a son, and, and that to me is what the moral of the story is. Well, I absolutely love the short and I can't wait for the feature. Thank you so much. Thank you. So make sure you keep an eye out for West End, and until next time, keep talking.